Hi YouTubers and welcome back to the channel VA Creative where Rufus and I are sharing with you what it's like to build an Ultima RS. This is part seven. Just sit back and enjoy. again in the Dean Den and I'm a poet and I don't know it. Anyway, this week we're going to be focusing on ancillaries, three to be precise, and we're fitting them to the chassis as it starts to take shape. The first is the Raptor controller. Now this Raptor isn't something out of Jurassic Park where you rip your face off. No, this is the Raptor control unit the, the little buttons on the steering wheel. It's, it's, just, it's just Formula One, it's just amazing. And then next, not quite as exciting, we're going to be fitting the fuses and the relays we installed last week into the provided bracket from Ultima. And then finally, the battery. Now it may sound pretty simple exercise, but there are particular tools you need to install them. And as ever, at the end of this episode, I will cover some tips and techniques that will make this job easier for those of you building Ultimas, or even those of you that are out there building any kit car. So let's get ready for it and let's start spannering. So here's the Raptor unit. Now this is the unit that controls the buttons on the steering wheel. And the reason we're fitting this unit now or at least the bracket for this unit, is because it sits here. Now it may seem a very odd position for it, but once the front shell is on the car, there's an access panel through here where you can get to the fuses, the relays, and this unit if it ever needs replacing or maintaining in the future. So let's just have a look what's in here. So let's see. I would imagine these, oh, look at that, look, 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 look at that. Doesn't that look beautiful? So we have headlights, right indicator, horn, left indicator, windscreen wipers, hazards, windscreen washers, and fan. Nice bit of kit, that. The Raptor GP from Summit Technologies, and it comes RS branded already. So we keep that to one side to put on the steering wheel later. But what we're more interested in is this control unit here. Which attaches to the loom here. Plug and play, plug and play. And here we have the fixing screws which I would imagine if we look at the mounting bracket, which is also provided. Yep, the holes line up with the rivet nuts.
here, you can see me installing these three fuse boxes and also the relays to this supplied aluminium panel from Ultima. Now I just want to share with you the amount of effort it saves when you get supplied brackets such as this. I mean, this has been cut to size, it's been formed, it's been laser cut, it's been drilled, and it's had riv nuts put in place so it actually mounts perfectly to the angle of the center tub when it's put on the car. Now, yes, I could have formed that aluminium panel. It would have probably taken me a couple of hours. And yeah, I've done it before building other kit cars, but the premise of building an Ultima is items like this come preformed. And I think looking up there, I'm pretty much finished now. So let's move on to installing the battery. We now have the battery securing brackets in place. Next, what we have to do is install the main bracket. Now, this is a removable bracket, of course, a clamp, because if you need to change the battery. Now, this is held in by four set screws, stainless steel, of course, nothing else. But to allow those set screws to actually be bolted into thin aluminium, we have to use something called a riv nut. Now, these riv nuts are made of aluminium. They have a threaded portion inside. And how they're actually attached is they're put into a hole, which is already in place in the aluminium. And then you use a special tool 
to actually collapse the deformable part of that rivet nut to hold it in place. Now to do this, you do need a specialist tool and they're not particularly expensive. The one I have here is a bit snazzy, as you'll probably see, but they all operate on the same principle. So what you do is you get one of the rivet nuts and you understand the size of thread which it has going through its core. I don't believe it's that one. I think it's this one. Yep. So what I'm going to do is assemble this tool. And then we need this spanner. So let's put this to one side. We get ourselves a rivet nut and we thread the rivet nut onto this shank. That is then put through the hole and what we do is hold it and just tighten this. done in the Dean Den. Yeah, I know some of you want more, but I tell you what, it takes an age to put all this material together. But I must say, I just love these smaller jobs. They are just perfect for when you get home from the office and just a couple of hours in the garage tinkering away. And of course, as I always say, you crack open that beer and admire your work. Well, next week, we're going to be focusing on the brake and clutch lines, the hydraulics, what keeps this beast changing gear and what helps it stop from huge velocities. So until then, happy spannering and remember, creativity is intelligence having fun.